Hello and welcome to this short video introducing the Camden Instrument 7000 SMZ Mark II Tissue Slicer. Camden Instruments has been making tissue slices since the beginning of the 1980s and the 7000 SMZ Mark II is a culmination of those 30 years experience. It is a world beating tissue slicer capable of producing unfixed slices of unparalleled quality. The horizontal vibratory amplitude can be adjusted between 0.5 and 2.5 mm with a vibration frequency between 50 and 120 Hz. The instrument has a vertical Z axis deflection error of less than 1 micron. The blade advance speed is variable up to 4 mm per second. The slicer weighs approximately 33 kg. You may wonder why the instrument needs to be heavy. There are good reasons. The structure of the slicer must be very strong and rigid to maintain the accuracies we have achieved and the ratio of the stationary mass to the vibrating blade mass has a significant effect not only on slice quality but on transmitted vibrations and operator comfort as well. The greater the ratio of stationary mass to vibrating mass the better the quality and comfort. With fewer vibrations transmitted through the instrument to the workbench. To maximise this ratio, we also have to ensure that the vibrating mass is as small as possible. With this slicer, we use titanium for the blade holder. Titanium is approximately one half the density of steel and has other significant advantages. It is unaffected by ACSF and does not rust. A complete specification is available from Camden Instruments or our website. Numerous optional extras to facilitate slice production are available. These will be discussed later. In this video we will take a brief look at various aspects of the slicer and demonstrate its use. More explicit details regarding each aspect together with step-by-step -step instructions are contained in the operator's manual supplied with the instrument. The slicer weighs approximately 33 kilograms and will require two people to lift it from its shipping box to the bench. The slicer should always be lifted using the lifting handle supplied. Once the slicer has been placed on a suitable sturdy bench, you can unscrew the lifting handles so that they do not impede use of the instrument or take up too much bench space. The wooden shipping box in which the instrument was delivered also contains the specimen bath assembly tool case, electrical lead and any optional extras that you may have ordered. Before connecting the instrument to the electrical supply, check that the supply voltage setting on the rear panel is correct for your particular country. The operator's manual shows how to check or change the setting in greater detail. The tool case is a convenient place to store items that are required for slicer operation. In the tool case you will find sample ceramic and steel blades a blade holder with all the necessary screws and washers, a blade guard, an adjustable specimen holder, an optical unit, a blade handling tool, a specimen holder and adjusting spanner, and all the necessary hexagonal drivers and a screwdriver. A slicer memory can retain up to eight user names and their preferred operating parameters. When the instrument is switched on, the display will show a list of previously stored users and any unused slots. To select an existing user together with the operating parameters that were last used, simply use the up, down arrow keys to highlight and then press the menu key. If you want to edit the name of an existing user or register a new user, Scroll to the appropriate position and use the menu key to enter the menu display, then use the arrow keys and menu key again to select the line Edit Username. Use the arrow keys to scroll down to the username line and press the menu key. Use the rotary knob and the up arrow key as instructed in the operator's manual to enter a new username.
When you have finished, select the line Change and Exit and press the menu key. Any changes that you now make to the operating parameters will be remembered under this username. Different tissue types and states require specific operating parameters, such as vibration frequency, amplitude and advanced speed. Changing the frequency, amplitude and section thickness parameters is a simple task and is accomplished with a minimal number of keystrokes. From the normal operating screen, press the menu key and use the up, down arrow keys to scroll to the parameter that you want to change. Press the menu key again and then use the arrow keys to change the parameter. When you have finished, confirm your change by pressing the menu key again. The speed of cutting through the tissue is adjusted during the cutting operation using the rotary knob and will be dealt with later in the video. Fitting or removing the tissue bath is another aspect of slicer use that we have made very easy to execute. The eye surround outer bath is held in place in a spring-loaded dovetail mount. To load or unload the bath is a simple two key operation. Press the load bath key and the vertical stage will be moved to its lowest position. Move the spring loaded bath locking lever to the left and the bath can be withdrawn from the stage. To fit a bath, move the lever to the left and slide the bath base between the stage dovetails until the stop is reached and then release the bath locking lever. A small peg in the vertical stage will prevent you from fitting the bath the wrong way round. Once you have fitted the bath, press the load bath key again and the vertical stage will be raised to a nominal home position from where you can raise or lower the bath to a position more suitable for your needs. The inner bath is located in the eye surround outer bath by side guides and magnets. The specimen mount is then located in the inner bath by a circular magnet allowing you to rotate the mount to any desired angle. We supply two types of specimen mount with each slicer, a fixed mount and an adjustable angle mount. The adjustable mount has a platen that can be locked in any attitude up to 15 degrees away from the horizontal. We can also supply specimen mounts made to your requirements having any specific presentation angle that you may want. The inner bath and the specimen mounts can be autoclaved by normal means up to 120 degrees Celsius. The ice surround outer bath contains thermoplastic materials and cannot be autoclaved. Replacement baths and specimen mounts are available as spares. Optionally, the standard tissue bath may be replaced by a cooled tissue bath with temperature control. This will help to keep your slices viable for longer periods. The 7610A temperature controlled tissue bath is dealt with in greater detail later in this video in the optional extras chapter. Camden Instruments can supply two types of blade. One is made from surgical quality stainless steel and the other is made from zirconia ceramic. Although it is more expensive than the steel blade, the ceramic blade holds its edge for a much longer period. Note that uniquely the blades are located in the instrument by their ends. This holds the blade more rigidly than a central clamp and also allows the cut slice to travel over the blade and re-enter the bath fluid, helping to preserve the slice's viability. It also permits you to cut several slices before harvesting them from the bath. This is very useful when cutting slices in automatic repeat mode.
When you remove or fit a blade, you should always use the blade holding tool. This protects both you and the blade while still allowing you to hold the blade securely. Loosen the two blade securing screws and remove the old blade. Note that the left hand screw has a left hand thread. This helps locate the blade positively in the left hand fork when the screw is tightened. Fit the new blade under the plastic washers and push it up against the fork stops. Tighten the blade holding screws but take care not to over tighten them otherwise you may distort the blade. The plastic washers will deform in order to grip the blade edges without affecting the blade. Eventually the plastic washers will degrade and may introduce Z-axis errors so they should be replaced at regular intervals. Replacement screws, washers and complete blade holders are all available from Camden Instruments. Consult your operator's manual for the correct part number. For operator safety, each instrument is supplied with a removable blade guard. This is easily fitted and removed as it is simply held in place with a magnet. Once it is in place, it will protect the operator from accidental cuts and also protect the blade edge from damage. A paper by Geiger et al. of Freiburg University, originally published in 2001, highlighted the link between slice quality and the so-called z-axis deflection of the slicing mechanism. Z-axis deflection refers to the vertical vibration of the blade during its lateral vibration. The vibrating mechanism of the 7000 SMZ Mark II slicer has been designed and assembled so that any z-axis deflection evident during its lateral vibration is restricted to less than 1 micron. There are inevitable small manufacturing variations in all mechanical components such as the blade holder, the mounting arrangement and even the blade itself. These all combine to make fitting the blade so that its edge is in perfect alignment with the lateral vibration access very difficult. To minimise trauma to the specimen, the cutting edge of the blade should be aligned as closely as possible with the lateral vibration axis. If you look closely at the blade holder, you will see that it is secured to the face plate of the cutting head by three screws. You will also notice that the blade holder has an open slot in its right hand side. A differential screw mechanism arranged vertically within the blade holder across the slot allows fine adjustment of the slot width to be made. By adjusting the slot width, we can change the angle of the blade edge relative to the cutting head and thus to the lateral vibration axis. So if you loosen the lower screw, the one on the right hand side of the blade holder, you will be able to use a hexagonal key to turn the differential screw and change the slot width. In conjunction with the National Physical Laboratory of the UK, we have developed a non-contact method of measuring the blade alignment. This is our Optical system. It is plugged into the slicer and will then detect the blade edge and measure its alignment with the lateral motion axis so that you can make any adjustments required. Here we will demonstrate its use. Once you have fitted the new blade, use the menu key to enter the main menu screen and scroll to the option Blade Alignment and follow the instructions on the screen. Connect the optical unit. Once you have done this, the instrument will reposition the vertical stage and ask you to fit the optical unit to the stage. Confirm that it has been fitted and confirm the type of blade. The instrument will now reposition the blade edge relative to the optical unit and ask you to press the slice on off key to initiate blade vibration. The current blade alignment error will now be displayed so press the slice on off key again to stop the vibration. On the blade holder, loosen the lower screw slightly and using a hexagonal key, turn the differential screw slightly in one direction. 
Retighten the lower screw and press the slice on off key to start vibration. The Optical will reassess the blade alignment error. If the error has increased, you should turn the adjustment screw in the opposite direction. If the error has reduced, you should turn the screw once more in the same direction. Repeat this process until the alignment error has been minimised. Once you have completed the alignment procedure, press the return key and follow the on-screen instructions. When the instrument is switched on, select the preferred user or press the menu key to reach the normal operating screen. Note that the slice on off key is now illuminated green and the display shows the operating parameters with advanced speed shown as 0mm per second. Next we need to bring the specimen to a suitable start height by entering the height adjustment mode. To do this press the height key. Press the load bath key and the bath will begin to rise. Press the load bath key again to stop it. Set a movement amount by using the rotary knob and use the return or slice on off keys to either raise or lower the bath by this amount to move the specimen to a suitable height. You can repeat this as often as you wish until you are satisfied. Once you have brought the specimen to a suitable height, press the auto repeat key to reset the height datum to zero and use the rotary knob once again to set the desired slice thickness. Press the height key to exit the height adjustment mode. We can now set the start position of the cutting head. To do this, press the advanced key and then using the rotary knob and slice on off key to move the head to a suitable start position. Note that the rotary knob will allow you to reduce the advanced speed past zero into negative values and move the head backwards. When the head is in the desired position, press the advanced key again. This is the position to which the head will return after a slice is taken and the return key is pressed. Press the slice on off key and the cutting head will start vibrating. Use the rotary knob to control the advance speed of the head through the slice. Again, note that the advance speed can be reduced past zero and the cutting head moved in reverse. When you have cut the slice, press the slice on off key to stop the process. When you press the return key, the system will lower the specimen slightly before retracting the cutting head to the start position you set earlier. The specimen will then be raised once more to its original position plus the slice thickness ready for another slice to be taken. In the previous chapter we showed how to adjust the slicer and take a specimen slice. If you now press the auto repeat key, the slicer will enter the slice window mode. If you now press the slice on off key, the slicer will automatically take another cut, remembering where the cut was started and stopped, together with the section thickness you specified. You will have to use the rotary knob to set an advance speed for the first cut. You can then repeat the cut as often as you wish. All you have to do is press the return key to bring the head back to the start and then the slice on off key each time.
When you operate under this automatic sequence, you can also control whether the slicing operation is stopped at the end of the cutting stroke or whether it will retract the cutting head to the start position before the operation is stopped. This feature can be set by accessing the settings screen and selecting the line beginning Auto Stop At. Toggle between Auto Stop at End and Auto Stop at Start using the arrow keys. If you set the option to Auto Stop at Start, you will not have to press the Return key before pressing the Slice On Off key to repeat the cut. The operator's manual shows this in more detail. There may be occasions when you vary the advanced speed whilst cutting a slice. For example, you may want to go fast through an unimportant piece of material and slow down for an especially delicate area. As you make the cut, the slicer remembers the speed profile and you can then repeat it automatically. To enable this, press the auto repeat key twice and the display will change to the profile repeat mode where you are invited to input the number of cuts to be taken. Use the arrow keys to input the number of cutting cycles. Once you have set the number required, press the slice on off key and the instrument will cut the number of slices required using the same speed profile that you used originally. If you want to stop the procedure, you can press the slice on off key at any time or in an emergency, the emergency stop button. Refer to the operator's manual for step by step instructions. A range of accessories is available for use with the instrument. The options include a cooled tissue bath to help prolong slice viability a magnifying lens or microscope and a cold light source aid observation during slicing. In this chapter we will take a brief look at these. As always further information is available from Camden Instruments. The 7610A cooled tissue bath was mentioned briefly earlier in this video. This fits to the slicer in place of the ice around outer bath and accepts the same standard inner bath and specimen holders. Once fitted, it will allow you to control the temperature of the fluid in the inner bath, thus helping to prolong the viability of the slices being cut. Place a piece of the supplied thermal transfer pad to the top of the cooling unit and then fit the standard inner bath. The cooling unit must be connected to an adequate cold water supply. Connect the unit to the controller and press the on off button. The display will show the temperature of the surface of the cooling unit. Pressing either the plus or minus key once will display the set temperature. 
Repeated pressings of the key will change the set temperature. The display will revert to display the current temperature a few seconds after the last key press. The indicated temperature is that of the upper surface of the cooling unit. Further details of compensating for the temperature offset of the bath are in the operator's manual supplied with the cooling unit. A specially designed magnifying lens and mount is available that will give two times magnification. The magnifier is secured to the top of the instrument cover using the supplied neoprene cushioning pad and screws. The magnifying lens can be flipped up for easy access or moved to give optimum viewing of the tissue and cutting process. A cold light source having twin flexible arms and focusable light beams is also available. This will give enhanced illumination of the tissue bath and tissue without radiating unwanted heat. This also fits to the slicer using the supplied neoprene cushioning pad and screws. If you are using the magnifier, you should fit the magnifier first and then fit the light source to the magnifier mounting plate. If you are not using the magnifier, then the light source can be fixed directly to the instrument cover. The power supply is supplied with a number of adapters to suit most power outlets. The light intensity is adjustable. A press button on the mounting base controls both the intensity adjustment and the on-off functions. The light beams are focusable by twisting the ferrules at the arm ends. As an alternative to the magnifying glass, you can fit a microscope giving greater magnification. Mounting points are located at the rear of the slicer. Please contact us for further information. The slicer has been designed to give reliable, trouble-free service and other than regular cleaning does not require any maintenance. You should not use any solvent-based cleaners to clean the instrument. However, the blade holder, inner tissue bath and specimen mounts may be autoclaved. After a number of years of use, however, you may wish to send your slicer back to Camden Instruments for a comprehensive service. Camden Instruments operates a fast turnaround facility for those instruments that are returned for service, but you should note that instruments will not be accepted without prior authorization and also must be certified as having been cleaned of any material likely to be hazardous to our service personnel. For returns authorisation and decontamination certificates or further details and advice, please contact Sales Support. We hope that this video has given you an insight into the operation of the Camden Instrument 7000 SMZ Mark II Slicer and that it will help you to use the slicer effectively to get the best quality slices. In a short video such as this we cannot show every aspect of the slicer operation but the operator's manual supplied with the instrument deals with each area in greater detail. If you have any questions or want further information about the 7000 SMZ Mark II slicer, its accessories or any of our other products please contact our sales department or visit our website at www.camdeninstruments.com.